Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about WandaVision and what it may mean for the MCU going forward. And we'll get to that right after this. The beginning of a new year is when many people start thinking about their goals. And I'm no exception. Uh, the Goal Process 101 ebook has helped me clarify the best and most achievable goals for me, uh, plus, helped me set a plan in place to accomplish them. I mean, this podcast is just one of the results of using the Goal Process 101 ebook. Uh, check it out at christiannerdsunite.com slash goals. It helped me. I'm sure it can help you too. Now, back to the show. Before we get started today, let's look at scripture, and I want to share something really close to my heart. I, I just found out about something today, and uh, just before I recorded, so I, I just wanted to talk about it with you for a few minutes. Let's start with scripture. We're going to start with Psalm 34, 17 through 19. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from all of them. And then Psalm 71, 19 through 21. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. Now, before I get into WandaVision, I felt like I needed to share something with those who listen to the show. Uh, now, if you have young listeners with you, you may want to skip a bit and go right to the WandaVision portion uh, and listen to this part later. So I'll give you just a second. Okay. I lost a friend today. I'm going to call him Chris. He was also a listener. We connected online while I was moderating our church live stream. It's one of the things I, I do for our church from time to time. And uh, back then I was doing it every single week. Uh, I would talk to those people who were part of the live stream uh, while the live stream was going on. We would chat back and forth and I would pray for them and uh, uh, I would uh, welcome them and things like that. Chris was one of these people that joined our live stream. I quickly found out we had some nerdy things in common and that uh, he was coming back to Christ after spending some time away. Uh, we became friends, and after a year of watching online, he finally came to a service, and we met. Uh, he was a great guy. He had a, a renewed love for Christ and uh, an enjoyment for Doctor Who, <laughs> which we both shared. Um, he suffered from a lot of things. Uh, specifically, he had, a, had great depression and uh, some severe social anxiety. So showing up for a real church service was difficult for him. Uh, it was great to finally meet him after almost a year of watching online. And uh, I was honestly amazed that he showed up. Now, at this same time, I was struggling with some things myself. Now, I've talked a little bit about this on the show before. At this time, my wife was in the hospital very sick. She had a serious heart condition, a super rare I issue. Um, we still didn't know what was going to happen. When she finally had her total artificial heart surgery, Chris came to the hospital, of all things, just to give me a hug and, and pray with me for a moment. And uh, it, it was amazing. It was, it was incredible to think 
only a year before he had, was only watching online, uh, afraid to show up in service with a group of people. And, and now here he was coming to the hospital simply to give a hug to a friend who needed some comfort. Now we chatted off and on over the past two years, uh, mostly online, sometimes at church, uh, because of my situation, taking care of my wife. I, I wasn't able to be there as often as I would like. Uh, he was also working a lot of Sundays, so he wasn't there as often as he would like it as well. But we talked from time to time. Uh, I would always try to encourage him because I knew that uh, that depression crept in often. Today, that depression overtook him. And I'm very sad. Uh, I'm grieving the loss of a friend today. Now, there's two reasons I want to share this. First, if you or someone you love is struggling, please connect with them. Connect them with people that work in the area of depression and suicide prevention. There are national organizations and local organizations in most cities. Please be there for your friends when they're in need. Second is that grief over the loss of someone isn't momentary. It waxes and it wanes, sometimes gently, sometimes suddenly and violently overtaking us. Chris was a friend, but I cannot imagine how his family is feeling right now. We all grieve in different ways at different times for different lengths. If you're currently grieving, know that it's okay to grieve. It's okay to ask questions of God. God's got big shoulders. I promise he's ready to listen and answer. We read that scripture earlier, uh, Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you're struggling in either of these areas, also feel free to reach out to me at christiannerdsunite.com. I'm not a professional counselor. I am a believer. And I have love for all my Christian nerds out there. I will pray for you and I'll try to connect you as best I can with someone who really can give professional help. Actually, because of all this, I basically completely rewrote what I was going to talk about today. Another reason I wanted to talk about this specifically grief is that WandaVision is having its final episode this coming Friday. Now, I'm not talking about grieving over the show ending. I'm actually talking about last week's episode. It's now clear that the show has, from the very beginning, revolved around Wanda's grief over le losing her brother Pietro, Quicksilver to some of you, and her husband Vision. We just were not let in on that being the reason for the show all along. So let's look at it. The previous episode, at the very end, Agatha is revealed for who she is. Uh, for all intents and purposes, she's the villain of the show, it appears. Um, now, I'm going to put this in a little bit different vein. Um, definitely think she's going to be the villain as far as the show is concerned. But I think they're also trying to put this in a slightly different light. Um, she uses these kind of terms talking to Wanda. I, I tried to wake you up from all this. Um, you'd rather fall apart rather than face the truth. Honestly, this episode turns into kind of a reenactment therapy session. Now, first we go through and we see her first loss her parents when she's very young. Uh, Agatha implies that her she used her powers in that moment, even though Wanda is convinced she didn't have any. Um, her second loss, being used by others for their own purposes, people experimenting on her and her brother, this is where we see her powers really appear. 
Agatha says that they didn't give her her powers, but fully awakened them. Uh, she implies that if this moment hadn't happened, her powers probably never would have manifested, and that they simply augmented them through their experimenting. Her next loss, that of her brother, Pietro, um, Quicksilver. And uh, we see Vision consoling her and saying probably the most important line of the show so far. And uh, my guess is this is a line they came up with early on. We hear Vision say, what is grief if not love persevering? And I think that's an amazing line. Here's what I hear that saying. It's saying that the process of grief is showing how much you truly loved those that you've lost. It's more than just a, a, a pain. It is showing love. I think that's a beautiful picture. Now, then we see her final loss. We see her losing vision. You know, not just his death that in the Infinity War she had to live through twice, uh, but uh, to see him completely dismantled and, and unable to give him a proper burial. Finally, we see her grief explode. Now, I've always been told by others that, uh, you know, grief comes in waves. And I would say this is like a grief tsunami right here for Wanda. We see her create a whole new reality for herself where she could make things the way she wants them, where she and her husband and her children are, are there and they're whole and they're loving. But we've seen all along that there were kind of cracks in this new reality that she was creating. Uh, expressing grief is important and, and therapeutic, but ignoring it and, and pretending it didn't happen uh, kind of the way Wanda is. She's, she's basically trying to suppress her grief by creating a whole new reality where she doesn't have to grieve. Overall, that's not a healthy outlook. Now I was honestly moved by the episode last week. It was one of the best explorations of grief I've seen in some time. Now, so to go back to the scripture I shared earlier one last time, always remember, God is close to the brokenhearted. Now, if you want to check out more of these stories, and this Wanda story is kind of a combination of about three or four different comic book stories that involved Wanda and vision in some way. So if you're wanting to read any of those and you've got the Marvel unlimited app, here's what you need to check out. Uh, you need to check out the vision quest, the vision quest storyline. And uh, you'll find that in West coast Avengers uh, issues 42 through 45. There is a Wanda and the Vision miniseries that's just four issues. And then we have Giant Sized Avengers number four, where you actually see them get married. And then we have another one, which is House of M. And this is the one where we see that grief creating some, some terrible things in the world. Now, uh, none of these stories is exactly what we're seeing happen on the TV screen right now, but there are threads of all of them weaved in and out of what I, honestly, I think is a masterpiece of work that Marvel has done here. I think this will go down as one of the most successful projects they will ever do now. So on to my predictions. And what I hope we will get from the final episode. Now, I suspect we will get a couple of great battles, um, and I think they'll probably kick off really fast. Uh, I am hopeful we'll see a couple more things. One, I'm hoping we'll see Wanda's manifested vision, this, this vision that she created basically out of thin air, joined in some way with the synthesoid body that Hayward has brought back to life. 
and see them combined in such a way that we get a real vision back uh, that can step out of this hex area that can uh, survive and, and is a real superhero again. Now, another thing I really hope they do is I hope they play out this grief motif one step further and they turn it from Wanda over to Agatha. Now, in the comics, Agatha has a son, Nicholas Scratch. Why do I bring that up? Well, we've got Senior Scratchy, that is some weird rabbit that she has that apparently can eat birds. It's a strange thing going on there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But Nicholas Scratch is her son in the comics. I don't think we'll see any of the comic through lines at all in one division, but here's what I hope they do. My hope is that Agatha has seen what Wanda has been able to do and that she believes that Wanda can use her powers to bring her son back to her. Now this would be far different than any of the comic storylines. But the MCU plays pretty fast and loose with what the original comic books did. Um, you know, we'll see a scene here and there that's, you know, ripped out of the comic books. You know, you see the panel and you're like, that's exactly what that should look like. And then they'll do something completely different, you know. But I would love to see this be the point that Agatha has this ulterior, not exactly evil motive, but is desperate to bring her son back from the dead, from a different multiverse area, uh, from somewhere beyond, and that she sees Wanda as a way to make that happen to help her relieve her grief that she's going through. I would love to see that be what happens. Now, if this is the case, my guess is whatever that is, it's going to go crazy and it's going to go awry and it's going to crack open something new. This idea of the nexus, uh, a place where all the alternate Marvel universes connect in one central location, and that will lead us into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. A little shorter today. And uh, it's a little different than uh, than previous episodes. But I, I hope it's been meaningful to you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the stories I shared. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy WandaVision. And on Friday, you'll uh, get to watch it with us. Um, we'll see how this all plays out. Um, do join us on Facebook. Check out Christian Nerds Unite on Facebook and on Instagram, and then check out our website, ChristianNerdsUnite.com. Now, before I go, I always like saying a quick blessing over you. May the love of Jesus Christ bring us wholeness. The grace of God the Father grant us peace. The breath of the Holy Spirit instill passion, and the unity between them give us strength for this and every day. Amen. Blessings. We'll see you next week.